Well, when it comes to Scottish legends, they don't come any bigger than uh, Peter C. Brown. I'm delighted uh, to have a little chat with you now about uh, Scotland's chances in the World Cup. Uh, this, the selection has just been made. What are your own thoughts? Probably it's the best equipped and most experienced side we've ever sent to the World Cup. Plus, Mr Robinson in charge, he's been there before. And let's face it, he's the guy that did the business with England all these years ago. OK, he hasn't quite got that calibre throughout the Scottish team. But uh, I think they've got a fabulous draw. To be able to play Georgia and Romania first, then face Argentina. Uh, the biggest drawback would be if Argentina beat England in the first game. So let's hope England beat them. And then we go on to Auckland for the final game against England, deciding who wins the group. Think of the Kolkata Cup this year. We couldn't win our scrummage ball, we couldn't win our line-out ball, and yet, with ten minutes to go, just a bit of better direction on the field, we could have won the game this year at Twickenham. So I'm very hopeful. However, everybody's forgotten the New Zealand weather. I mean, my daughter's out there. They had snow in Omaru this week. I just hope all the fans that are going out realise they're going out to a real Scottish-type winter. There's going to be a lot of rain. And obviously, when you weigh up the odds, we always tend to think of it in decent weather. Now, there'll be games out there when the underdog will get a great chance. Let's hope not when we play Romania and Georgia. We love that sort of weather, don't we? Mm. I would have said so in the past, but the way Tooney's got the backs now offloading in contact, it would be better to have a dry ball, the type of game we're trying to play. My big disappointment is the very poor kicking from scrum half. The number of times, five times on Saturday, uh, scrum half, just kicked the ball down the field to the opposition. Now, I've got to know Fury Dupree very well, probably still the best scrum half in the world. And Fury always considers he's failed if he can't put the ball up high enough so that when it comes down, the recipient knows he's getting a gorilla on the end of it, in other words, a teammate. Why can we not do that? Of course, I mean, the scrum half was one of the big talking points and uh, young Greg Laidlaw is staying behind uh, in favour of Rory Lawson, Chris Cusseter and Mike Blair. Um, do you feel the selection is, is the right one from Andy Robinson? No, I think he's gambling with Cusseter. Cusseter's got the experience, but I think it's a mistake. I always go back to, we took John Rutherford to New Zealand the last time when he was allegedly fit. Uh, And, of course, he broke down after 10 minutes in the first game. Uh, It's a mistake to take a player that's not battled hardened. Plus, I think Greg Leglow gave them... He can play anywhere. He could play fullback if they were pushed. Otherwise, uh, I'm quite happy. Uh, Mr Beattie not being there means there's not the same aggression in the back row. But I'm not sure that we'll miss that. I think we've got a very, very good back row. I just hope our... Fullback that played on Saturday has discovered how to tackle. <laughs> of course, the other thing is the fact that Andy Robinson felt two games would be enough. Ireland uh, have had five. And we are kind of done and dusted. We've won our two games um, and, and heading towards New Zealand in good mood. Nicky Walker will tell you we played one game too many. That's for sure. So, so th- this is... How do you get it right? Uh, I think what Robinson's saying is they have had such a terrific preparation Before they went into the games, they've had two games, they made mistakes, and that's the great thing about making mistakes because you can learn from them, you've got something to work on. We've got, hopefully, these two games that we should definitely win to put us in the driving seat in the group. Uh, So I think he's got it right. Had we gone out to meet England right away, then I would have said, let's play two more games beforehand so that we are up and ready for them. But of course, uh, England have lost uh, in the warm-ups, Wales have lost in the warm-ups, Ireland have lost in the warm-ups. We're on a winning streak now of three, if you include the Six Nations against Italy. And as I say, a couple of uh, wins over Georgia and Romano. All of a sudden, we're unbeaten in five going into the Argentina game, which, you know, mentally must be great for the team. Well, you haven't mentioned New Zealand. They probably have had the most successful warm-up, which they did four years ago. 
Uh, it's interesting that this time, this last week against South Africa, was the first time he put out a weakened team. Because uh, the last time, remember, he tried to be 30 players, give them all a shot. New Zealand at home will be dreadfully difficult to beat. Is it right that we could get them in the quarter final? I forget. Yes, I think if we top the pool, we'll probably meet France. If we come second in the pool, we'll get New Zealand. So we want to top the pool, basically. But I think eventually we would meet, meet them at the very least in the semi final. OK, well, if you're asking me who my money's going on, obviously. New Zealand will be odds on. I would put the outsider being France. France are the team that World Cup after World Cup produce the goods when it matters. And I think they'll do it again. How many warm-up games did they have? Do these warm-up games, are they really important? <laughs> well, it's an interesting situation because, I mean, people are saying, well, you know, look at the injuries that have happened for, uh, for some of the other teams. And, uh, and at the end of the day, from a Scotland perspective, Max Evans, when he ran out on the pitch, that was his first rugby for a long time. So as an ex-player yourself, was it important to uh, play games rather than intense training? What was the most beneficial? Well, as a forward, mm. it's very important to do the intense training and the contact. Uh, I'm not sure the fancy boys out on the wing need as much contact. In fact, I just wonder sometimes if we go over the score with them. Remember the 1971 Lions? Standoff, Barry John, Mm. who probably today would not be selected because he's got no defence. In the 71 Lions, Barry John was told, keep out the road, you're too valuable. On the field, when the opposition have the ball... Get out of the road beside the fullback. You just don't feature in our defence. Change game now. It certainly is. And, of course, four years ago when Scotland were in the World Cup and did, did so well with a young team, we've retained most of those players. So they're four years wiser, which has got to put them in, in good stead. Well, in that case, the majority will remember how poorly they played against Argentina in the quarter final. They just didn't perform. And you may recall when the substitutes came on with 15 minutes to go, raring to show they should have been on in the first place. Our performance totally picked up. And at the end, no side. The game was there actually for Scotland to win. We'd come back into it so well. What would be a great performance for us? To do very well in the quarterfinal tie. I'm certain we'll get into the quarterfinal. The odds are we'll be the second qualifier and we'll therefore get the top of one of the other groups. New Zealand without Dan Carter? Who's to say what they'll be like? I don't think we'd be good enough to take on a New Zealand side at home and beat them. If if we can get to the quarterfinal and do very, very well, I'm sure the guys can come home with their heads held high.